So as uh, every year, this uh, conference is designed to advance our thinking about economic challenges uh, in Europe, with a special focus on Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe. And this year, uh, we put the spotlight on public and private funds that help EU member states align the economic performance and thus uh, stick together. Well, for me, the main message is about convergence. Convergence is key for all our European countries, inside the Eurozone, outside the Eurozone, and it's, of course, particularly important for Central and, Euro and Eastern European countries. And when you look at the way these economies have converged in the past, there has been a lot of convergence, but it has been very much linked to uh, integration into global value chains, that is, production lines extending across borders. And there is a question as to whether this model can be sustained in the future. It's, so the conclusion is it is very important for Eastern European countries to uh, keep investing, but to keep investing in a way that creates innovation uh, and that allows them to remain at the edge of the innovative process. And for them, Europe can help. Europe can help by deepening the single market. Europe can help by moving towards a true capital market union. And Europe can help uh, by uh, helping them to make a better use of the uh, European money. I think that the monetary policy in the post-crisis period has been extremely conducive to favorable financial condition, meaning providing support to the credit activity, to the economic activity. And now we are approaching a, a time where, to a great extent, the buffers of the monetary policy has been used. This means that there is a need to reshift the focus to structural policies. Of course, uh, increasing uh, the pace of the structural uh, policies will provide even further room for lower normalization of the monetary Monetary policy, but it's clear that in the medium term there will be a normalization of the monetary policy, which is preconditioned for preserving the macro stability and reducing the low, uh, vulnerabilities in the economies. Central and Eastern Europe uh, uh, has a relatively high growth rate, uh, but still uh, we have to find uh, new policy instruments uh, uh, which help to improve this convergence process so that the people in Central and Eastern Europe uh, get a better infrastructure, get better possibilities uh, for their education uh, and will find uh, their way uh, so the economy uh, will uh, improve significantly. So my talk today is on the banking and capital market unions, which both play an important role for the cohesion of countries in the euro area. And therefore, of course, this also has wider implications for countries who are not at the moment members of the euro area. And my main message is that, uh, as we see uh, in Italy at the moment, uh, the European Monetary Union is not as stable as it should be and that further reforms are needed and most importantly we need to break the sovereign bank nexus, so the close relationship between banks and their sovereigns. Well I was focusing very much on how important the internal market is also for uh, f fostering uh, investments in, in uh, the European Union and specifically in the CE countries. I also uh, was mentioning how much access to finance uh, is at the core of the problem. So the, the um, uh, projects we had under the FC fund, and the Juncker fund, but also what we're trying to do with the capital market union are very, very important in that context. And finally, I was also mentioning, and that's maybe a new aspect which hadn't been so much at the center of attention, is how important strategic good public procurement is in order to make sure that the investments are done in the right way, so sustainable, green, innovative investments, and that they're also done in a correct way, in a fair way, so fighting corruption, making sure that there is professional buyers who actually make the right investments happening on the ground. In order to improve the investment climate in the Western Balkans, there's a few key ingredients. Sustaining macroeconomic stability, which improves investor confidence, 
uh, reducing onerous business regulations so that new firms can enter, old firms can exit, and firms can grow, closing the implementation gap, strengthening regional economic integration so that markets are larger, creating those markets, and then finally investing in people so that people have the skills, the cognitive abilities to be the workforce that companies need. Well, we are investing in uh, wind energy and solar power plants in uh, various uh, CE countries. And um, while we see that there is uh, funding, financing, banks, uh, lawyers and uh, staff available there uh, for us to, to, to manage these projects, uh, we see it is very important a precondition pre pre that uh, there is a stable uh, long-term uh, environment legally, uh, but also politically, that is very important for us. Uh, and therefore it's very necessary that these countries um, um, uh, continue to work to have a stable environment uh, and, and uh, for, for investors to, to be able to invest there. First of all, attractive uh, markets, what we find there, what uh, attracts us uh, to invest in these countries. Good uh, production uh, environment, meaning uh, low cost, uh, but uh, good uh, sales uh, development, and also a uh, stable and uh, good legal system uh, combined with a stable uh, political situation.